What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this 15th episode of the Separation of Concerns and Apex Common tutorial series, we're going to go over what the difference is between integration testing and unit testing. Alright guys, so welcome to this 15th episode of the Separation Concerns and Apex Common Tutorial Series where we are going to go over the difference between integration tests and unit tests. Um, I think a lot of people get really confused about this. What is the difference? You know, like, wh why does it matter to have a unit test as opposed to an integration test? Why would you want one over the other? Blah, 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 etc, etc, right? Um, so let's just uh, go over it. <laughs> Hopefully clear it up. Because once somebody explains it to you and you really start to think about it and see some examples in front of you, it gets a little bit easier, I think. But All right. The main difference between a unit test and an integration test is in an integration test, you are actually calling other classes that your class might call or querying the database or inserting things into the database. Whereas in a unit test, Instead of actually, I guess, testing that all of your paths throughout, or sorry, testing that all of the other things that your um, class calls to get things done, for instance, by asking uh, to query the database, you're, you're really asking the system to do something, not not really your class specifically or this method specifically. You're asking the system to return you a bunch of cases or whenever you're doing an update call, you're asking the system to do an update for you. Or for instance, if I was calling another class and I was saying something like, um, I don't know, accounts, account domain, equals new accounts um, then I'd have to send it in some stuff for this to actually be legal but then we'd say account domain dot you know get us object type or something right so three different things uh, that we'll give as an example here if I was doing an integration test and uh, basically what I would end up doing is actually testing that not only this method works, but that this method truly works, like my path from this method to the other one gets called and it truly returns what I want it to and it truly does the things that I'm anticipating it to. Um, additionally, in an integration test, I would actually do this query and this query would ask the system to give me records in return for real. And I would then actually update those objects, those cases, and ask the system to do that. Now, so in an integration test, I'm actually testing every single thing, like every single class or system call or whatever else that I need to get done. But in a unit test, um, you don't really want to do those things. What you're really looking for is trying to figure out whether your your logic, as in the code you wrote, the logic is actually executing in the way that you want it to. So, um, say for instance, this list here, right? This list of cases actually did return empty, right? We'd want to make sure that this got skipped, right? This whole deal got skipped and we actually threw a custom exception, whatever that is. It's not real in this org, but um, you know, maybe we could just throw a DML exception. Um, we'd want to test that this logic is working, right? And we'd want to test that if we did get objects returned to us or we did get cases returned to us that we got in here and that this actually did set the subject and the status to panther and chocolate. <laughs> um, but what we don't really want to test is whether or not the system is 
cool doing these updates or that the system is cool querying for these things or that this call to this method is, you know, working right. Because in a unit test, the goal isn't to test that all these other things are working. It's to test whether or not you know uh, that your logic is operating as expected. And you might wonder, like, why? You know, why would I choose to do a unit test instead of just a bunch of integration tests? Well, here's the thing. Um, most methods, uh, well, not most, but a lot of methods will have the need for you to test, I don't know, 15 different logic scenarios. Maybe, you know, there's a whole bunch of different conditions that could be true or could be false and lead down to path A or B or C or D. And you'd want to check that those conditions are true in all scenarios. So like, you know, maybe you could say something like and account domain dot get s object type uh, is not equal to case or something like that, right? Case dot s object type. Maybe you'd want to test that, and then you'd have two scenarios. What really you'd have uh, several scenarios to test now, right? You'd have to, to test whether or not when this is not empty and this is not a case object, then you'd get in here, and then you'd have to test when this is not empty and when this is a case uh, object, then you'd bail out to go in here, and you can see how like. You know, if you're really testing all of your logic, that can become a lot of different tests. And ideally, you want those tests, but you don't want to have to query for real and do real inserts of data and all that stuff just to test that your logic that you built is really doing what you thought it would do. And the reason that you don't want to do that is, uh, well, for several reasons. Number one, it's completely irrelevant, honestly, whether this truly does its job uh, when you're doing a unit test like I was just describing. But more specifically, uh, even maybe even more important than that, is that if you are doing these SQL calls and these update calls, if you didn't know, these are the most expensive operations, right? So if you did, you know, six different tests just to test these different if scenarios and making sure that your logic is truly doing what you want it to in these different scenarios, then you'd start to see over time your tests take longer and longer and longer and longer to operate. And um, eventually that becomes detrimental, especially when your org gets uh, to a decent size, because then you'll start looking at things like instead of deploying in half an hour, it takes you six and a half hours to deploy because you've got all these tests testing all these different scenarios and if you're thinking uh, well I don't want to do these tests why would I even do these tests to begin with you gotta just just change your mind and here's why you should change your mind about doing unit testing and testing in general if you aren't <laughs> if you don't do these tests two things eventually happen number one you can't know for sure that whatever small change you made isn't going to impact something else down the line, right? You can't know for sure that this one little change you made doesn't break some other scenario that you forgot to take into consideration. And what that in turn ends up doing is creating more bugs in your ecosystem and then your product owners and the business people that don't have anything to do with code start to trust you less. And then you're not able to make as many code updates and do as much interesting stuff as you once were able to because you had no tests to back you up, you made too many mistakes, and now uh, everybody is freaked out about making any changes to the system. So make those tests. They are important. Even if they're not fun, they're almost more important than the code. <laughs> um, so anyway, integration test. Test all the things all the way through. Unit test, just test the logic. And it tests it 
quick and it just cares about the logic in your class making the right decisions. Um, nothing else, not the logic in other classes, not whether or not the system likes you, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, um, important differentiation. Um, as far as when you should use unit testing over integration tests, uh, I still, I'm not saying that you don't want to do an integration test. You absolutely should. Um, but like I was saying, you probably only need, you know, a couple of integration tests, right, that maybe prove out a positive and a negative scenario. And then you need unit tests to test all the other permutations that are less important after that to do an integration test with. So say, for instance, um, you know, I was testing all of the scenarios for this. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got five different scenarios for just this one if statement. So you can imagine if there were more ifs in here, um, that could get even crazier. So for those different permutations of your logic, I would make unit tests to test out those, you know, different variations. And then you can trust now that you have all these quick unit tests that your logic is remain the same, nothing is changing despite whatever little tweak you had to do with your last story or for some bug fix, uh, you now know that your logic that you had previously is all operating the way that you designed it. So, um, yeah, I think that's mostly it. In the next episode, we're gonna go over in episode 16, we're going to go over how separation of concerns fits into um, unit testing. As you can kind of see from this class, this is an example of a no separation of concerns class. And, um, well, we'll see that unit testing is basically impossible without separation of concerns. So that's kind of why it fits into this whole discussion, because you need separation of concerns. And these different layers in your system to be able to really properly unit test. So we'll go over that next. Hopefully this kind of clears up why you would use a unit test and when you would, right? It is to test the logic specific to your class's method and not the logic in all the other methods or places that, you know, you could be dealing with you know you could be calling five different classes in this one method I don't know but you don't care about that logic you're just trying in a unit test to test if your logic is doing what you anticipate it to right um, and hopefully you're grasping that integration st tests are still important it's just that you don't want to use them to test all the different hundreds potentially of permutations of your logic um, because that would really slow down your testing effort and it's not really at all necessary at a certain point. You just, you just don't need it. So, um, all right, next episode, episode 16, we'll get into how separation of concerns fits into this. And, uh, yeah, that ought to do it. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next episode.